there's there's an an excitement to kind of synth the electronic y sounds. Um yeah. and I think the colours, like interesting outfits, I think it mirrors that quite well, mm. I'd say. Um and it brings out my personality because I'm a bit mad. <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, I think it just all kind of ties in yeah. quite well. So today on It's an Indie Flex, we have Rachel Kerry. How are you doing today? Good. Good? Yeah. How are you? Good. So I first saw Rachel at a gig in the Water Rats. And one thing that struck me straight away with you, well, what was your setup? Firstly, I found that really interesting. Yeah, you've got quite a few mm-hmm. like, synthesizers and not the usual setup you might see when you go to the average pub gig in London. Sure, uh, yeah. So I wanted to ask you a couple of questions about that. Do you find that sometimes with um, a setup that's a bit complicated, that you find mm-hmm. it difficult to get gigs sometimes? The getting the gigs because of the setup, I guess... It's a bit intimidating to venues, I suppose, to go, yeah. we've got all these things, um, we need this many inputs. But we've managed to work it out between me and the band that we actually don't need that much um, back from the sound in the venue. So yeah. a lot of the stuff we mix pre-sending it out. My producer, Joe, his setup is, he's got like two synths, he's got some looping stuff going on. He's got, he's triggering some samples, this kind of thing. But he actually only sends out two outputs because he's sorting all of his mixing yeah. up. Oh, okay. So it's a little bit less intimidating. Do you find mm. that having that addition of more interesting instruments adds to your performance? As in, it, it makes it more interesting for people to watch? Yeah, for sure. I think having the different synths, like pedals going on, yeah, people hitting stuff left, right and centre. I think that that makes for a really visually interesting. Uh, the reason it's like that is genuinely just because I wanted to find a way to do this kind of really synthy electronic music, but have it all live. We have like stuff we trigger and we have loops and things like that, but most of it we're recreating like exactly as the record, but we're doing it all live. I think you can feel the difference yeah, with the sure. audience, with the atmosphere, if you're doing it all live and... Yeah, it feels a lot more engaging if yeah. you've got all that going on. So this is my first single, right? It came out last summer. It's called Be My. in my life you entered it so freely I was scared of being in love and nobody knew but I'm not second best to no one second best to no one second best to no one second best to you and you're not second best to no one second best to no one second best to no one Okay, so that was Be My, Rachel. I love the sound design and uh, I guess all the detail in that song. I think it's uh, really clever and really well put together. So how do you find um, working with a producer when you're creating music that relies so heavily on sound design? I produce a little bit myself first. If I've got a really clear idea of the sounds that I want yeah, um, and the vibe it's going to be, I'll do as much as I can of that production and then I'll work on it with the producer yeah. to get it, you know, better how it actually should be. 
um, how I'm thinking it is in my head. But honestly, a lot of the process is me going, I want it to sound like a bit more shiny or something. And then they'll do something technical and I'll go, yeah, that sounds cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a lot of trying to describe what you're what you want to hear in words, which is a really difficult thing to do. But I guess having a good connection with that person yeah. and them sort of understanding you really helps. Joe uh, plays with the band in you, right? Yeah. 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 So as, as you are using people who um, essentially, you know, you're Rachel Carey performing Rachel Carey's music with your yeah. band. Um, mm -hmm. How do you find then managing people who are committed to your cause? You have to have the perspective of understanding it's not going to be everyone's number one priority, right? So um, I've I've had uh, different people in the band. So yeah. there's a kind of core band of uh, me plus three others. Um, but yeah, on certain gigs, people have, you know, other gigs or something that's their project or something that's going to make them a lot more money that they have to prioritise, which is totally cool. Yeah, you've got to be flexible and you need to kind of uh, understand that not everyone's going to be as invested in your project as you are. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so this tune is coming out on the 20th of May and it's the first track of uh, an EP that I did with Joe. It's the first project we worked on together. Um, the EP is called Obsessions and this track is called High. I don't know. You know that you're making me feel right But you get me so high But you know that you're making me feel right You get me so high It's my confession, I don't want to say you're an obsession But I think you are the one for me You get me so I know you hate it, I'm aware you don't reciprocate it But you know the feeling sets me free You get me so high All feelings heightened You seem frightened Do you remember when you wanted me? I am intense, I know I can't deny I love the rush that it gives to me I've lost control, I Need to know that I'm making you feel right You get me so high Let me know that I'm making you feel right You get me so So that was high. That's uh, another really, really well put together, well produced piece of music you got there, Rachel. So um, Thanks. when's that coming out? So that's going to be out on the 20th of May. I'm after spending a lot of time the last few weeks trying to do all of the prep yeah. for release, which is exciting. No yeah, I, I'd imagine with, um, I guess, current world situation, you've got quite a lot of time on your hands to... Well, m maybe attempt some more interesting, more out there promotional techniques. In terms of like releasing stuff, uh, there's this artist called Chinchilla who I love. Mm -hmm. um, and she's just released an EP and she did a kind of release show on Instagram Live. And it was her and her flatmates and they were doing full routines and, uh, you know, singing the whole thing. And yeah. that was pretty cool. That was That was nice to have as an alternative to like a release show. Yeah, so... And maybe I maybe I'll do something like that for the release. Who knows? With everyone having a lot more time on their hands, there's a lot more potentially a higher creative output at the moment. Um, so, have you been creating any more music or been putting together any more videos than you might usually would have done? Sometimes we're productive, sometimes we're not. But actually, in terms of writing, I've had time to actually write quite a few 
new things yeah. experiment with some stuff which has been really nice because you know it's not often you have that have that time to yeah do you feel mm. like there's going to be like a coronavirus kind of sound coming out you know man i've thought about this so much i'm like are all songs gonna be about being alone yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know for me when i write i think loads my emotions back up from a long time ago so whenever i write a new song it'll be about something that happened a year ago yeah so maybe in a year and a half i'll release a song called corona and no one will care anymore <laughs> Who knows? okay so for promotion for the ep i assume looking at facebook instagram you know typical social media platforms to present that over but what about your website do you, you because I want to talk about this really because uh, again as I mentioned earlier I think it's all really well put together really part of a good aesthetic um Thanks. but how do you feel like as an artist your website has helped you and how, how important do you feel like it is for an artist to have a website yeah that's a that is a good question because from what I've heard from you know industry people that kind of thing you need to have a website right people are interested in that mm -hmm. it's a it's a place your social media can can sort of meander all over the place but your website is is really kind of a concise way of saying this is who i am this is what i look like this is my vibe so um in making that that was a, a really nice uh way to just make sure i know exactly what my vibe is and i've just redone it to kind of fit with the ep so yeah, I think it's important uh, in a way if someone wants a really quick look at who you are and what kind of thing you do. Yeah, did you um, design that yourself? Yeah, I did mine myself. Mm. Yeah. And so, did you yeah. do the all the cover art and everything else that's coming out with the EP as well, or was that just in line with the same aesthetic? Um. So I've actually shot a video for High, which is the the first single off the EP. Yeah. Um. Yeah, which will be coming out the same day. So a lot of the aesthetic uh, for kind of this era of Rachel Carey is, um, has come from the shoot for that video. Yeah, so the cover art, things like that have all come from the shoot and uh, the edits from the video and things. So One thing that stood out to me um, was your, well, when I was looking over your social accounts, is your mm. personal aesthetic. You know, the colours you got going on, uh, the fact yeah. that all your websites and your social medias, it's all like really well branded and it's all really together. Kind of got kind of like a H&M went over to Japan kind of vibe, came back to the catalogue. and um, oh, sick. So I wanted to ask like how you went about creating that aesthetic and mm. if that's something that you enjoy doing. I've always been super visual. So that kind of working out the branding and the style was a huge like part of coming up with who I am as an artist, I think, and I really enjoyed it. Okay. Um, I've always loved, like, old-school stuff, 80s, 90s, retro vibes. Um, I love a tracksuit. I grew up in tracksuits. <laughs> yeah. So I'm from Nottingham, so, you know, always wearing a tracksuit, 90s tracksuit, good vibes. Um, yeah, so I think it, it was kind of just what I'm comfortable in uh, and what expresses my personality. Yeah. Um, lots of colours, kind of silly outfits, but that are fun. Your product being your music, um, yeah. how do you feel like the look that you've gone for represents that vibe? There's there's an an excitement to kind of synth the electronic -y sounds. Um, yeah. And I think the colours, like interesting outfits i think it mirrors that quite well mm. i'd say um and it brings out my personality because i'm a bit mad so <laughs> yeah i think it just all kind of ties in yeah. quite well let's move on to our third and final song okay this is called second only love i was a fool to believe that he cared that he can and i had no rules so when the light turned all that I can think about is you like me oh. And the minds can be cruel to deceive How we see what we shed We had no rules So when the light turned off All oh, I could think was All he wanted was some fast love All that I could give him was passion Just a passing moment wants me only for the second of the 
second only for the second only love for the second only for the second only for the second only for the second only love for the second only for the second only So the song we just played and the one from before are coming in the EP, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So So, um, EP Obsessions um, is coming out 29th of May. 29th of May. Um, Yeah. And High is the first single off that. So that's on the 20th. Three tracks. It's a quick, yeah, story. The the three tracks kind of came to me at a similar time. And I think they all... They're all different uh, parts of the same story. Yeah. So, do you have any plans uh, for label backing or management or anything at the moment? Not for this EP. No, I'm hoping that um, that there'll be some kind of traction from it because I think it's a, I think it's pretty good. You know, I really like it. Yeah. I'm quite proud no, of yeah, it. Really good, <laughs> so, really um, good. yeah. So we'll see. If anyone, if anyone likes the sound of that and yeah. interested, well, yeah. I'm really excited for the EP to come out. So again, that's 29th of May, right? Yeah, and high is the 20th. Yeah, so I'm just Rachel Carey Music, all one word on everything, um, Insta, Facebook. That's kind of all I use. I've got a Twitter, which I never use. Oh, we've all got a Twitter we never use. <laughs> but yeah, Rachel Carey Music. That's me. Great, great. So yeah, this has been It's an Indie Flex with Rachel Carey. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share the video and follow Low Shelf on Instagram. So, again, thanks, Rachel. And uh, hopefully I'll come to perform soon or something. Yeah. See you in the real, real world at some point. It's an indie flex.